Welcome, welcome. June 5th, 2017. It is a Monday. That's easy for me to remember because we're usually here on Mondays. So we'd like to welcome all of you. We're happy to have you here. Tonight we're going to start off our new little format. It's not going to be that much different, but what I what we decided was really more efficient is for, for everyone watching, because we have lots of different levels of people watching, is I've gathered together a couple questions. I'm going to address those questions. They're, they're more larger generic topics rather than specifics. If you have specific questions regarding the issue I'm talking about, I want you to ask those so that we can clarify. I really believe that I teach much better when you all ask questions because it really helps me recognize what you're not aware of. And then any other questions you have that we don't answer, if you'll email the, them directly, and then we can accumulate them, and then I'll continue to make topics. So it's just delayed a little bit, and I can be more prepared, and I think it'll flow better. And then tonight, for instance, we're gonna talk about two main subjects. Before we get to our POM, our POM will start at 8.15, you know, normal, but we're gonna have two main topics. And then what we can do is we can put those two main topics in our um, description of what took place in this webcast. And so when you're looking back and trying to find them, we don't really have to index all these questions and we don't really have to, you know, I think it's just a great way to save time and be efficient and you guys be able to go to the answers, et cetera, et cetera. Now, what we're also gonna do in um, conjunction with the webcast is we'll be editing that question and answer page that's on our features page on the website. We'll keep updating that so as we get questions often they'll go onto that page. So what we're hopeful of is that page is a really good resource for you to find questions to your to find answers <laughs> or to maybe ask more questions, maybe to think of questions you haven't thought of before. Our goal is to guide you along the way and help you. That's our goal without doing it for you, but our goal is to help you. So tonight, the first thing I wanna talk about is ease. I get a lot of questions about does ease, what it is. There's a very simple explanation and there's a very simple definition and then it has to be kind of extrapolated to where you can really apply it to you and really think about. So ease, what is it? Ease is the difference between your physical body and the cloth. So that's why in t-shirts, a lot of times we hear the word negative ease because that means that our t-shirt or the cloth is actually smaller than our physical body. But first I wanna talk about just regular ease. I'm the only person, and if we go through and remember our L, our C and our D, which is our definition of fit. We don't use the word fit. We use the word, we use the three words, length, circumference, and depth. When it comes to length, we don't have ease. There's no ease. There's a bust point, there's a waist, there's a hip. There's no ease in that measurement. Ease is circumference. Ease is built into that circumference measurement. So when we're dealing with fit, ease is in that number and that circumference measurement or ease becomes subjective. It is up to us to decide what we want and how we want it and all of those other things. When we go to LCD depth, again, depth is not, doesn't have ease in it. There's no reason. It, so understand that in the definition of fit, where does ease fit in? It fits into the circumference, this middle category here. And so what that means is that ease is determined by us our personalities, our age, our, our religious beliefs, our polito, who knows? All of those things influence what we want to do. And the example I've always given over the years is there's three women, and all of these women have a size 40 bust. But this woman is 20, and this woman is 50, and this woman is 70. So if you take the same exact garment and give that garment to two women who have the exact same size bust, one is 20 years old and one is 70 years old, most likely that both of them won't say, oh, this garment fits. All right, even though what they're really saying is the circumference is not adequate to me, what they're really saying is, I'm being Oprah here, what they're really saying is their ease 
is different and what they like in a garment is completely different. Age is all that simply has changed in that situation. They have the same physical body size. So therefore that is why Silhouette Patterns offers you the finished garment measurement. Because I know all of us have gone to a pattern, gone to the back because they pick it out by your bust size, not, your, not with ease included. And they say, okay, if you're a size 40 bust, this is the size you will make. And many of us have made that size and we've gotten to the end and we thought that we don't like this. This is way too big for me. I'd never wear anything this big. Somebody else will say, oh, this is way too small. I don't want something this close to my body. So the only thing that's wrong there is that ease is never discussed. It's never made to be really obvious in the pattern. So the reason Silhouette Patterns does finished garment measurements is so that you can pick the finished size you want. And no one can tell you, I, I get it all the time, I get emails that say, this is my measurements, what size should I cut? You know, I can't help you with that. That's your choice, your decision, and you're the one who has to make that decision, and I know you all know that. Um, I just want you to make aware that's what ease is. In a woven garment, there are many of us who like our jackets to where we can't move, because it'll make us look thinner. There are many of us who like our jackets to be larger because we want to be comfortable. So again, a lot of that's personality and I think you're understanding. Okay, so then I want to move to negative ease and negative ease. And I've had many, many women who, and I love the workshops for this reason, they'll put on a garment in a workshop, a t-shirt specifically, and they've made this size that's like way too big and I'm looking at them like, why would you choose this big of size? And they say, well, that's because that's what my t-shirts measure and when I put on their t-shirts, their t-shirts are way too big and we put, we, we borrow somebody else's t-shirt and we put it on them and everybody like, oh, they look so much better. I see it over and over and over and over again. So now the negative is when you use the negative, I didn't mean that. When you, when you use negative ease on a t-shirt on the bust, a lot of times it's too small in the hips too, and the beauty of making it, I was gonna say the negative of buying, but the beauty of making it is that I can actually have negative ease at my bust, but then not have it tight through the hips because there's no advantage on having it tight through the hips. The advantage of having it tight through the bust is that underneath our bust is a hollow, and so the garment can actually come in under our bust and we look thinner. There's no advantage of having it too tight through the hips. In fact, just the opposite, it will make us look larger. So the advantage of sewing is I can choose this negative ease for my bust and then just go to a one-to-one -one when it comes to my stomach and hips, which is a great case scenario. All right, so having said that, ease is simply the difference or the lack of difference between my body and the garment and who chooses ease is you. And ease could also be synonymous with circumference of the garment. Okay, and hopefully that answers most of our questions. And let's take questions now for any of you who have other questions on ease, that magic little word, E-A-S-E, -E, ease. Okay, I think I ease. Yeah. No questions on it? But they like how your supplies are laid out. They're distracted by it. Oh, you're distracted by all this? <laughs> I'm prepared for you all, okay? I'm, this is my way of preparing. I go from topic to topic to topic so I can remember what I'm going to talk about. <laughs> Are you going to make a thong out of that? No. <laughs> Did somebody ask that or is that you? <laughs> I'm not going to repeat that. Okay, because only the ones who are live here tonight, the ones knowing back, won't know what was said and we're going to avoid what was said. Okay, the co question is, good comments, on si good comments on size. I have learned that I often can wear a smaller side than, than I had assumed. Absolutely, you guys, and I... I know I've talked a lot about shopping, and I think some of you just get mad at me for saying you should go shopping, but I'm not just saying it to say it. I'm saying it because it will decrease the amount of trial and error that you have in your sewing room, and your sewing time is much more valuable, or it's, no, that's not the right way to say it. Um, it, will, it will cost you more sewing time than it will shopping time. You'll save a lot of time sewing if you'll go shopping. And what you say to me is, I hate shopping. I, I know, I get it. I know you hate it, okay? <laughs> I have heard that out of everybody I've said this to. I'm not sure why everybody hates shopping, but you hate it. I get it. Size is a number. It doesn't make a difference. Call it research. I'm doing my research. So I'm going there, I'm finding out, and it will save me lots and lots of time 
once I get to the sewing machine, once I get into creating what I want. That's the goal, okay? Okay, the next topic I wanna to talk about now is darts. Ease first, darts. Darts are important because, you know, oh, Peggy, do you think I can determine ease from the stretch of the fabric versus my favorite top? Um, I don't know, but what you can do is you can take the fabric and wrap it around you and pull the fabric to how you like it and then measure it and then use that number as your finished garment measurement. I, I mean, we say that actually on the back of the patterns and I, we don't just say it to say it, it actually, it actually works if you take the fabrics because they all have a little bit different stretch. But when you're dealing with knits, go to the largest size you'll want and then work it backwards and you can, you know, you can always go smaller. All right, so let's go back to darts. Um, you know, I, I chose darts because there's been lots of questions on darts, but interesting that they came up tonight because our pattern of the month, which is 4509, is called the runaway dress. And I patterned this dress or I duplicated or draw, drew creative licensing from Butterick back in the days in the 50s where they had a dress called their walkaway dress. And if you Google the walkaway dress, what you'll learn is that it was a pat it was their number one selling pattern. In fact, it sold so many patterns that they shut down presses making other pattern numbers all to supply demand for this walkaway dress. The goal was that you sat down in the morning, made the dress, and had it all made in time for lunch so you could walk away to lunch and have a new garment on. And you know, a lot of that is kind of the thought process that was in the 50s, women were home, they didn't work. It, it mattered what we wore to lunch. <laughs> you know, We can wear our sweats to lunch these days, and that's the good news. Um, but I liked it. What appealed to me is the simplicity of it and the ease of it. So again, going back to the 50s and the time frame, we didn't see a lot of darts in the 50s. Um, they had gathers, they had pleats, they had things that were not darted. The reason the dart came into play was it was very slimming, it was slenderizing, it made us look thinner than what we actually were. And so of course, it's like knits today. Knits make us look thinner than wovens. Do we love knits? Yeah, everybody wants knits. So we kind of clamored to the darts and darts became more and more and more popular. So when I hear statements like, I hate darts, I can't make sense of that. I just don't understand. It's not personal. They're not, a, they're, they're, they're just a simple stitch. They're a wedge of fabric on the sewing machine. So I think we start to get a little bit too, mm, I don't know what, but you, you get my point, let's back off. It's like saying I hate a shoulder seam, I hate a crotch. Nobody ever says they hate a crotch. It's just an essential part of the pattern and they do it because a crotch makes them look better than no crotch, okay? So pants make us look thinner than skirts. Pants are a good thing. Pants have crotches. There's no reason to hate them. I, I, so I, I'm not sure what that goes back to or how to help you get over that, except I would say, let's get over it and recognize the important role they play and how much better they make us look. So darts are either horizontal or vertical. When they're horizontal, they affect length. When they're vertical, they affect circumference. All darts don't change circumference. We have that kind of mentality where every time we put a dart, it's either gonna make the garment bigger or smaller. And that's not true. Horizontal darts like a bus dart affect the length. They are when we want an uneven length, and so we see them in the shoulders. Those are horizontal darts. We see them at the bust. We see them at the waist. Sway back is a horizontal dart. We see them in pants when we take a dart across the rear end, across the hip line. All those are all cases of darts that are horizontal. None of them change the circumference of a garment. The only time we see a dart that changes the circumference is the waist dart. And yet it's interesting to me that there's only one dart that changes the circumference, but we have a tendency to think all darts change circumferences. So I think it just leads to, in general, a gross misunderstanding of darts. And I'm hoping that maybe that's why 
we lead to not liking them. Maybe just because we don't understand them. When I was young, I know I've told this story. I said to my father, I hate onions. And he said, oh, it's just because, you know, you haven't eaten enough of them. <laughs> well, I don't like them. Well, eat enough of them and you'll learn to like them. You know, I hate to always say my dad was right, but he was right. I do like onions and I've eaten enough of them to where I like them. So maybe if you don't like darts, the thing is to do is to keep sewing them so that you'll see eventually you'll love darts. I can't imagine wearing garments without darts because I know what darts do to me. They allow me to eat dessert. They allow me to not exercise. They allow me to do all of those things that I really like to do simply if I leave out a dart. All right, so hopefully that will help you understand darts a little bit and hopefully get to where you don't mind the 30 seconds that they take to sew on that sewing machine of yours, okay? All right, questions regarding darts or ease, either one, because again, we want to put these categories on when we put the review of this on our page, and that way, if you have an ease question, you can go back. When you have a dart question, you can go back and we won't have, we can keep picking, we'll choose different subjects each time so that then you know where to get those answers. Can you explain how to insert a pleat radiating from a vertical dart? No, because that, number one, I just did it on the webcast, not a webcast, I'm sorry, what's today, Monday? On Thursday, um, when I did the jacket, I just did a jacket and I showed you how to do it. So if you'll go back to last Thursday, that's exactly what I showed you how to do, was to add a pleat at the bottom of a seam. But if it was a dart or seam, it wouldn't make any difference. It's the same exact thing. So those type of things, that's exactly why we're trying to categorize this. So there's not so many questions coming in from different directions that they actually do us some good. So I guess sometimes I feel like the question answer period isn't really helping us and I want it to be of more benefit. So this was suggested by, we had a little group meeting, it was a suggestion, I thought it was a great suggestion. Can you have both bust and waist darts sewn into a top? My top has the French darts but I need something to handle circumference. You can have both, but the French dart technically is the waist dart. So if you have a French dart and you still want to take away circumference, you should first look to the side seams. The side seams are vertical darts. And so that's where I would suggest you look first. If they can't do it, yes, you can have a waist dart along with a vertical dart. The goal again though, darts in general are not meant to be designs of the garment. They are a functional part of the garment, not a design feature. That doesn't mean to say there's not sometimes, I know darts have been used as designs, but in general, darts are fitting tools and primarily are used as fitting tools not as design principles. And again, they can cross, but just kind of keep that as a primary focus. We always deal with darts first, and then we deal with design. We try to incorporate darts into the design, and we go from there, okay? Peggy, I'm a reader. So any books I can purchase to read more on this topic? Well, I'm a big advocate on Norma Holland, flat, right there is it flat flat method I'm trying to give them the exact title flat a pattern making by the flat pattern method that's what it is Norma Holland wrote that book Norma Holland has passed away she died in 1999 thank you Brett. appreciate that um, but this is the book that she did she's done there was many editions done um, but this is a great book it, you can only buy it used there is limited because she's passed away. They are no longer printing the book. Um, and I think that this was my college text. I think that she wrote the clearest, most concise, great ability to do this kind of stuff. I mean, and I've seen them all. I've seen them all. And, and I'm telling you, ha as having one who knows the rules now and who is on the other side, I know the rules and I use the rules. Um, I think that she did an absolutely spectacular job of keeping it clear, simple, and yet accurate and concise. All right? All right. Can I shift the French dart to the waist on 195 and use it as circumference? Okay. When I get a question like that, you can put any dart in any place. But why would you want 
to do away with the dirt. When I just said it's your thinnest look, it's your best possible possible look, why would you want to take it away? That doesn't make any sense to me. And if you have time to answer that, answer that if you don't mind. Why would you want to take it away? If you take it away, you're going to get gapping, you're going to get all those, you're going to go back to pillowcase look. I don't want you to look like a pillowcase. I don't want you to look like Dolly Parton in a moo. Okay? Okay. When she answers that, just let me know. Yeah, we're good. Okay, so let's talk about 4509. It's the runaway dress. You know the history, you know the background. It is meant to be a really simple garment. Great for summer because it's just literally slip over the head. Um, some time ago, when my mother was still alive, I had done a, a PBS series on handicap dressing. And it was really a fun a whole show for me to do because I used my mother as... Um, the primary resource. Um, it was really fun because she got to be the beneficiary of everything I had done and she got to pick out all the, she loved it. She loved every part of it. She knew she was a celebrity behind the scenes. And it also gave me a chance to talk to a lot of people. She was not wheelchair bound, but there were many people who were and to talk about, and, and not on all ages, not just older women, but young men, all different ages, and talk about likes and dislikes. This is an absolute great dress for someone who is wheelchair handicapped because it simply slips over the head and you are good to go. And so we'll talk about that. The pattern is extremely simple. It has four pieces. It has a front, it has a back, it has a back yoke. I only did a back yoke because you could give it some interest and do different things with it. I didn't, I left it the same, but you could. And then has a sleeve and that sleeve is optional. Before we go to that though, I wanna talk about what I have on for just one second, because I wanted you to see this. And I, I love this. I knew I couldn't show it in any other way except for a webcast. So I'm, I'm kind of cheating on you guys tonight. This is, these, are, these are little cover-ups. They're little beach cover-ups or anything you want them to be cover-ups. And there's no sewing on them, but they do come, they're from France and the way they're knitted at the mill, they're actually reversible. The way they're knitted at the mill, you have to cut off like, you know, in order to actually make them a shawl, you actually have to cut off a section and then so you can see the fringe becoming fringe when you cut that off. Anyway, you have to cut off the outside and there's like a cut line. It's very easy to follow. So the reason I wanted you to see these is they're, they're terrific if you're just out, outside by the pool, beach, wherever you're going, and you just want to be covered. They're long enough that they make a sleeve. They go, they're like 72 inches long by 36 inches wide. They can also be turned sideways. Like you can turn them like this, you can wear them asymmetric. You can just do so many things with them. I'm just not even gonna go through them all. But the reason I'm saying this is what I decided I would tell my fabric guy, he imported them, that I would take orders. And then whatever people ordered them, we would, that's all we would do. So this is just kind of a fun little thing. We're doing it more as an accessory. Um, they are, so we're only going to take orders through Sunday. They're on the website only through Sunday. That's it. And when Sunday done, so if you order it, you won't get it. You'll get it separately. It'll arrive separately. So if you order it, then we'll hold all the orders till Sunday. We'll ship them next week. Once we get our shipment in from New York and that's what, how we're going to do it. So I've got to say that what reminded me is when they go over the head, because all this does is it has an opening. It goes over the head and it's fun. And if you do have someone who's handicapped or nursing or any of those things, it's great. It's great for something like that. Okay, so this top, I'm going to start with the different versions. And I did, what I did differently in this case is I did different closures on the front because I thought, that, you know, what happens is the front wraps to the back and then the back wraps to the front. And the front has enough overlay that it goes about three quarters of the way to the back. And then the back has enough overlay that it comes up to the front. If you want more overlay, you can simply go to a larger size or you can just draw, you know, just draw it wider. Very simple to do. It does have a sleeve. The sleeve is optional. If you wanted it to be kind of just a little sleeveless thing, that could be also, but I changed the sleeve up a little bit. So I'll go through the different changes I did. The fabric can be knit or woven, or I have one example where I used knit and a woven. I used both together. And again, I wanted you to kind of see, I had so much fun. I really had 
a lot of fun making them. And the good news is, is I get to wear them afterwards. That's always the best part of all of this. So I have a dress that I bought by Ralph Lauren. And in the summertime now, where it's just warm outside, I find more times I will just throw this dress on. A lot of times, if I've got a pool in my backyard, if I've been in the pool and the doorbell rings, I'll throw this dress on and answer the door. I mean, it's that great of a dress. It just always seems to work. But it's lightweight, it's rayon, and so it dries really fast. And it's black with white trim. It's like this. So the first one I did, and because I've worn that dress to death, I decided I really wanted a light, lightweight rayon dress with white trim. So I did the white fold over elastic on the black dress. I didn't make any changes to the pattern except for one. <laughs> I don't know why I say no changes. I made one change to the pattern and that was the sleeve and I'll show you that sleeve pattern. And then instead of doing a tie, I just, when the front wraps around, when the back wraps around to the front, I just did the buttons and little snaps. So there's a snap underneath here, you know, those nice big silver snaps. Whenever I do a large button, I have a tendency to do a snap underneath because I think it lays better than doing a large buttonhole, especially when it's only one layer. You know, you consider all your factors, but that's what I decided I wanted to do was just do a little button and a snap. And I love the way this looks. Can the dress be made to tie in the back too? It does tie in the back. The underneath part ties in the back and then the back wraps around to the front. And again, because it does show a tie on the front of the pattern, I wanted to come up with different ways to do this. So one of the ways was to just simply bring it around and snap it in place, and a, or, or button it in place. You could do either one, but again, because it was a thinner rayon, I didn't want to put a buttonhole, especially a larger buttonhole, in this rayon. So this is this black rayon, it's really terrific. It's just really, really nice soft feels great for fold -over, I used I used three yards of the black rayon and then I used six yards of the fold over elastic so if you look I did not do fold over elastic at the bottom of the sleeves because I wanted them to just be soft and drapey but the one thing I did is I added fullness to the sleeve I did not I I, I just told a story sorry this is just the sleeve exactly like it is at the pattern so actually, I'm gonna go back to my original statement. You know what, you guys, I took a weekend off. I should never do that. I mean, I didn't do anything. I just, the webcast has been done for a little while, so I forgot. There's no changes made to this pattern at all. I didn't make any changes. Forget my earlier statement. The only thing I did different is instead of doing ties at this front, I put a button with a snap, but not anything wonderfully difficult. I just decided to do that a little bit differently, okay? So, then what I did is because I had this casual mode going, I wanted to see it as a sheer. We had this beautiful sheer. Um, it's online now. It's a little navy. And I did this sheer. And I'm telling you, this little garment on is adorable. So my thought was to wear it like with a capri, a jean, um, a jegan, something, a uh, any of those leggings any of those but it's perfect if you've gone on a workout and you just want to you know maybe a leotard and you just want something really simple over you the front ties to the back the back ties to the front it's a sheer fabric it's adorable it is adorable now because this was this is the one that because the fabric was really light I decided I want this I wanted the sleeve to be a little fuller and a little softer so this I did change the pattern on. So I made two changes to the pattern on this. I made the sleeve more full and I'll show you that. And then I cut off the length and I took eight inches off the bottom of the skirt so that it turned it into a top. I'm gonna to show you the back of this. There's a little elastic back in here. That's part of the pattern. It's just adorable. I mean, it really, I haven't really worked with a pattern in a while just cause I've been doing other things. And I love these pattern of the month because it gets me back and it's like, oh my gosh, yes, I remember why we did it, what we did it for. So there's a yoke here and you could, I mean, you could wear this for anything. I could just put a little tank underneath it and it's absolutely beautiful. I was really excited when this turned out. I didn't use any sergers on this. I folded over the edge and just hemmed it. So it's beautifully made also. It's really, really pretty. I just really like it. 
So on this sleeve, because I made it more full, I'm going to show you how to do that. This, this is the original sleeve. And so all you're going to do is cut, cut, cut. I made one, two, three, four, five, six cuts. So if this is the center, you want to make three on this side, three on this side. And you're going to spread those cuts until I started with let me get my tape measure here. I started with the sleeve circumference, I was roughly 13, and I ended going up to 22. So it's one to one and a half. So you just wanna take and make those cuts, and then spread, 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 and you want those spreads to be somewhat evenly so that when you connect, and the sleeve falls, it has a nice pretty hem to it. And the sleeve, I mean, it really hangs just beautiful. I was so tempted to wear this tonight, and then I thought, no, I better wear this. But I love this. Can't wait to wear it. Like I said, it looks beautiful. The sheer is so summery, just over a little tank. And you can even do like a white tank underneath the blue. And then I had a pair of blue jeggings that I did that it looks really great together with. Okay. How much fabric is needed for the navy top? Do two yards. The short top, and the sleeve, this will do two yards. The fabric is not as wide on this one, so that'll be two yards. Now also, whenever I was thinking about, before I even started, I always thought about, okay, how am I gonna do the closure? What kind of closure, what kind of tie am I gonna do? Because to me, I think a tie sometimes makes it look really homemade. Sometimes I think it makes it look really good. So on this sheer one, I made the tie, and I just made it out of the fabric. It was very easy to do. Tied a little knot in the bottom. It keeps it very light. I just sewed it right into the, pull, the sections right here. Very, very simple to do. All right, with this one, the navy one, I actually didn't have any ties. Now, I could, you still could. You know, remember like those business envelopes? You still could take it and wrap it around the buttons if you wanted to and do a little tie. We put up this new rat tail, so it's kind of fun. You could make little, um, you know, variations of it. When you use buttons over snaps, do you cut the shank off the button or use a button with holes in it? No, you definitely don't cut the shank off of a button. You sew the button on first, though. And then you sew the snap behind it. You sew the button on however it was. If it has a shank, that's okay. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't have to go away with the shank. You can just sew it right on and then um, sew it on first and then sew the snap behind it. All right. Also for this one, after I did it, I thought, gosh, it might be cute if I put that little white neck piece on. We've got that little white neck piece. And because I've already got a dress that has it on, I, I didn't put it on this, but it's a perfect time to add a little neck piece to this, that embroidered neck piece. It's really pretty. Anyway, so we'll leave that. Okay, so then we're gonna move on. Different kinds, different strokes. And we're gonna go to, can you show how the front ties in the back? Um, on the pattern, right at a, between the bust and the waist there's a little mark it'll show it right on your pattern and it just literally you've got two ties there and you just take it to the back and you can tie it on many of mine what i do is i actually put a piece of elastic there and i sew it permanently so when i put it over my head i put my arms through that elastic and then it goes over my head and then i just tie the front the back's already tied so for me that kind of gives me that security but that's the easiest way to do it either way that way I'm not reaching behind and tying behind myself. Okay, so then I, I like my little top so much, I decided to do another one, and I did the knit. I did, this is the exact same as the blue. I just did it in the, um, the knit, and I did, it's got fold over elastic everywhere. On the bottom of the sleeves, everywhere, it's got this cute little deal in the back. I love this top. I just think it's adorable. <laughs> and then we've got rat tail. We've got white and black rat tail. I just sewed it right there and right there and then just tie it in the front. So again, very easy to do. 
And I like it with sleeves. For some reason, I think, and again, you can leave the sleeve off. It's just as easy to leave it off. But I think for some reason, as I see it as a cover-up or as a really cool dress, the sleeves are full. They don't add any heat to it. And they have a tendency to cover a little bit better. So that was kind of my concept with this. This I, I'm just going to wear with black leggings, black capris, really simple, really easy, and very, very cool. Nothing difficult about this, although just know a warning, <laughs> warning, warning, even though it's from the 50s, guess what? It has a dart <laughs> because I added a dart because when this crosses, I don't want this to gap. I want this to fit beautifully where it should and be the way it should be. And so there's a French dart that comes up the side. And you can't even see it, can you? But it does all the stuff a dart should do, which is take care of that gapping. So it's functional, not visual. All right, that's that one. And we called this stuttered sound waves is what this fabric's called. <laughs> what is the base for the POM 4509? It is the tank top as a base. Obviously you can see it's been largely changed, but the tank top is the base. And I did, um, once I added all the pieces, I did change, because the tank top has a bust dart and a waist dart, I did take them both and make a French dart because you really wouldn't want darts going uh, up and down the front and up and down the back. So that's what the tie does. The tie replaces the vertical darts and the little waist piece back here replaces the vertical darts in the back. So nothing's been left out. Everything's been converted to something else so that you don't sacrifice fit. It actually fits really well. <laughs> it's really cute. <laughs> It's really cute. Okay. Okay on that. Are our usual adjustments needed for this dress? Our usual? <laughs> what are your usual adjustments? I don't think you'd need a lot of adjustments, period, to be honest. Um, and part of the reason why is because the sleeve is free floating. The sleeve, the sleeve is not attached at the bottom. If you look at the, the sleeve pattern, it's only attached from this point to this point. So when you don't have a sleeve at the bottom of a garment, then it's less likely to gap because there's no accountability for that seam, for that portion of the seam. So the side seam is free to change positions and not be held accountable. I know that sounds crazy, but anyway, it is possible. So do I think you'll have the usual adjustments? I don't know what, if you're more specific, I could probably answer that, but I don't know what your usual adjustments are. If you're talking change of the shoulder angle, yes, I would still do that. It's about the only thing I would do. What is the best button placement with an FBA? I don't know what an FBA is. Full bust adjustment. Fast. Full bust adjustment. Is that what it is? The best button placement with an FBA? Oh, I have no clue, but I mean, your button, are you talking on this pattern? Give us a little more here. This is why we stopped questions <laughs> because y'all are trying to type really fast to get them in and so we only get half a question. But keep in mind, you can always email me at Peggy at silhouettepatterns.com. I'm not, I don't go away, I don't shut down. I'm always answering questions. Can you show us how you did the elastic in the back? Yeah, I'll use this one as an example. Um, so, if you know that on the back of this, center back, the darts are four inches from each side of center back. So what I did is I took a six inch piece of elastic and I stretched it eight inches. So I took center back, went four inches, four inches, that's eight inches. I took a six inch piece of elastic and stretched it in and stitched around and that just created that look. And it's a great look. You may be able to see it in this one a little bit better. Let me show you this one. Yeah, you can see it in this one a little bit better, the camera. This is linen. And so small little gathers are really beautiful in linen. 
So in this particular case, what I did is I did the back in woven and the front in a knit. So you can pick just two fabrics that you really like. And I, I love this. I mean, I just really like it. The first thing when I, when I was putting these two fabrics together, I love the color combination. This is the Ralph Lauren. And this is a brown linen that we have on our site. I first decided that I really wanted to, and I did this as a dress, not as a top. I first decided that I really wanted the ties. Again, I always thought of what kind of ties I was going to do first. Because the ties, I decided I wanted them to be in the knit because it really pulled it together. I wanted some kind of trim on one that belonged to the other. Just because when I see that in stores, I notice that it, it kind of pulls it together to me and my eye. I, so I just like the way they look. So I did this tie on the brown is what you see is I actually stitched it and then sewed it onto the brown so that once they tied, it looked a little bit more like it was coordinated to be this way. Not that it didn't look like it matched anyway, I just think I liked the way it looked. So this tie was very simple to make. It also, if you notice, it draped really well. I was looking at all those factors. So all I did was cut a, a piece that's two inches wide. I used the selvage, so one side was already cut for me. And I just folded it in, folded it in, and then I folded that in half. So I got this, and, and do it in the direction of the stretch. You want those ties to have some stretch to them. So just fold, fold, and then fold to the middle. I took a matching thread and went right down the middle. And it almost made like a really nice bathing suit strap. Great straps, just really nice straps. So those became my ties. And everything else I did just by the pattern. This was the regular sleeve, no changes there at all. No changes here at all to the pattern. It was just a matter that you can do this pattern in knit or woven. And I chose to kind of mix the two up and use them together. And I love linen in the summertime because it's just such a cool fabric. It does wrinkle a lot, which is why I decided to put it in the back because I thought if the wrinkles were bad, they'd be all behind me. But what would be in front of me was this nice ITY, which has really great drape to it. So that's why I made the decisions I did. This is just really cute underneath here. La 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 la. Very cute. Okay. Oh, FBA is full bust adjustment. Um, okay, so the question was... About the button placement. Button placement shouldn't change on full bust adjustment. Um, it doesn't make any difference whether you have a full bust or a small bust. None of us are going to put buttons at the nipples. Is that fair? Everybody raise your hand if you're not going to put buttons on your nipples. So other than that, everybody with a full bust should do the same thing. Create a focus um, and go from there. When you're doing that, and in fact, mentioning that, you want to think about that when you're doing the garment. Here, because if I take away this, the focus is really at the waist. If I add this, what you notice is the focus comes up to the, the face. So that can determine what you want to do and where you want to do it. And you can make those decisions based on, you know, what your preferences are about yourself. Shoulder seams on muslin of 600 sits back on shoulder. I don't believe I have a forward shoulder. Can I add to back at shoulder and take away on front equal amounts? Yes. Yes. Did you fuse the linen? Did I fuse the linen? I did not fuse the linen. What is the effect if you tie the back, if you tie the back to the front first and then the front to the back? Well, it's not an effect, it's just it's not meant to do that because the back wraps all the, I mean, you know, that might be too out of the box for me tonight. <laughs> the side is, the side isn't really pretty finished. I mean, it is, you finish it, but it's just angled to cover. It's not really, the front is angled, the front of the pattern has a front wave on it. It's meant to come together. To reverse it, 
do do whatever works for you. I don't even because I know the pattern and what the pattern looks like. I just don't see any advantage to that. Also, most things wrap to the front so that if they're exposing you, you can see. If you've got something that's wrapped to the back and it's flapping open, you can't see it. Your whole rear end could be hanging out and you wouldn't know it. So in general, clothes tie underneath to the back and they wrap on top to the front. But I always say, hey, it's your garment. You can do anything you want. Should the tank pattern be smaller size in knits than it is in woven? Yes. That's circumference. So when you're changing and going from a woven to a knit, you want to decrease the circumference, i.e. the size. Those are synonymous words. So when you decrease, yes. Are we good? Okay, we're good. And you know what? We covered everything we normally do, questions, answered, everything. And we got done in less time. And I think that's maybe because we're more efficient. Maybe. Okay, we've got about 10 minutes left. And I'm not going to... Like, I think it's good just to wrap up so that you can see all these great ideas in less time. And I think that's another goal. I'm trying to make us just more efficient without leaving anything out, but being more efficient in general. What we're going to do in two weeks, we're really excited about it. We're going to do, well, I'm not going to tell you the title. I'm just going to tell you that, I still can't remember her name. Brett and I were talking before the webcast, and I was telling him that this weekend, there was a big deal up at... Um, you know, we have this one, well, we have in Dallas a couple areas of town that are real hoity-toity. Anyway, but this one area was, thank you, thank you. <laughs> anyway, Kate Hudson was here, and she was doing a premiere for her exercise wear, her yoga wear, Pilates, you know, all this exercise wear. So I wanted to go up and see the store and the layout and, you know, all the things that went with it. And I honestly... I had to lift my jaw off the floor when I was looking at prices. And it just started giving me an idea that we can do this, you guys. And we can make this stuff cute and fun and amazing. So I decided that it would be great to do a webcast on all this real expensive stuff that takes you about, you know, not a lot of time to sew. So we're going to base it on that. And I don't, you know her big push was you wear it everywhere. You wear it to exercising and then you wear it to the grocery store. And I don't know that I'd go everywhere like that, but that's why you have cover-ups or wrap around dresses that you throw on over. Those things really work well in conjunction. So I thought it would be appropriate to have this and then in two weeks have that and we can tie that all together. So anyway, we will wrap up. We're good. Questions? One more. One more, okay. One more sneaking under the radar. Actually, no. No? No, okay. All right, so then we'll say good night. We'll see you in two weeks. And remember, happy sewing from Silhouette Patterns. Good night, y'all.